You're listening to an Anderson Entertainment production. This episode, we've gone full pyromaniac in Fab Facts. A visiting Frenchman is spoiling our dinner party in the randomizer. And Keith Alexander tells us stories from the set of UFO. That's all coming up in pod 205 of the FAB Jerry Anderson Podcast. Let's get started. Let's go. Spectrum is green. The Jerry Anderson Podcast with Jamie Anderson and Richard James. Hello! Oh, hello you! <laughs> Is that alright? I sounded a bit surprised then, didn't I? Yeah, I don't know why you're surprised. We've been doing it every week for the last four years. Oh, I know. And yet, somehow, it's not quite tiresome. Uh, fresh as a daisy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's me anyway. Uh, and speaking of me, as I often like to do, yes. I am Jamie Anderson, uh, oh, yes. co-host of the Jerry Anderson Podcast. But obviously being a co-host means that there's another co-host, and that's you. That's right. Talking of fresh as a daisy, it's me, Richard James, the other co-host okay. of the Jerry Anderson podcast. Yes. Of Is that course. right? And yes, you're right. Yeah. And also sat just over there, out the yeah. way, uh, yes. is our other co-host. And today... What? Well... What's going on? Uh, now, mm-hmm. you see, he's got his phone on a mount in front of him. I can see and that. It looks yes. to me very much like he's working on some choreography. So I think this week the randomizer Chris Dale is trying to do his very own TikTok dance. I think you're right. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what he's dancing to because he's got his little headphones in, but maybe we can work it out later on. Yeah, There's lots okay. Of, lots of hand swirling above the head going on. So He's certainly throwing a few interesting shapes, isn't he? Absolutely. Well, yes, Chris, uh, Interesting Shapes Dale, will be joining <laughs> us later on for The Randomizer, where he randomly chooses a random episode of a random Jerry Anson series and says not so random things about it. It's mm. a very entertaining segment. The most entertaining segment, perhaps, some might say. I'm not yeah. saying that. No, I'll give him that. I think that's fair uh, enough. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. But between this introductory ramble and that point, there's a load of other stuff, isn't there, Richard? So what else is coming up? <laughs> You're right. It's stuffed to the gunnels, as ever, the Jerry Anderson podcast. Yes, well, we've got the usual gubbins, of course. I think we've got the third part of Ben Page's interview with Keith Alexander coming up a little later on. Is that correct? I believe you're correct there. Yes, absolutely. Keith Alexander, who will be known to Jerry Anderson fans as... Uh, Lieutenant Ford in UFO and uh, various roles in Joe 90 and yeah. other Anderson productions. Absolutely. Amazing. Uh, we've also got uh, some Jerry Anderson newsy news news news, as I like to call it, or just Jerry Anderson news, really. <laughs> we all, we all uh, call it newsy news 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 we now. We do. It's true. Uh, we've got um, uh, emails, uh, tweets, and some Facebook <laughs> messages from our Hang wonderful on. podsterons. Yeah, Earlier what? on, you were saying, yeah, we've been doing this for the last four years. We all know what's coming. There's nothing fresh. And you're going, <laughs> hang on, we've got... Um, uh, let I me know, just remember. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah, I'm trying to keep it spontaneous. <laughs> I know what's coming up. You know what's... But for the sake of the listener, I'm trying to make it sound acting. fresh as a daisy. Your right? acting was so convincing, you even had me yeah. convinced. Exactly. So I think that's covered all bases. Uh, that's the Podstron's getting in touch. Uh, we've got the third part of the uh, Keith Alexander interview. We've got the randomizer. We've got uh, Jerry Anderson news, 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 news. There we go. Welcome to the Jerry Anderson podcast. Shall we move on? Mm. Mm. And you're purposefully missing out the oh. other listener's favourite... <sighs> post-show banter no no not that the bit that comes between the introduction and the rest of the stuff you said which is fab facts where um, curses come on i'm waiting for your enthusiasm here rather than just oh, that. oh sorry yes just... curses oh no that's not right. <laughs> yeah anyway i'll be bringing you that shortly from the book of fab facts where i've got a book of fab facts and i'll give you a fab fact from the book how's that pretty good isn't it all right right well you have a Carry sip on. of your coffee let's go yeah. directly into this week's fab facts now, time for this week's Fab Facts. Yep, now Richard's finished his coffee. It's time for Fab Facts. Have you finished it or have you still got something no, in there? No, go on. I've got a bit left, but you carry on. Okay, fine. Well, it's Fab Facts where I've got a book of Fab Facts. It's just here. 
And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I flick through it like I just have done there at a random point. Richard shouts, fab. And that then means that I stop flicking and read you a fab fact from that very page. So without further ado, Richard James, are you ready with your yes. fab? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yes. Ready. Yeah. Sorry. Good, yep. I'm ready with the facts. Here we go. Fab. Oh, yeah, I left it. I left it. You did. You did yeah. leave it. Yeah. But don't yeah. worry. Why? We are, we are only in the 70s. So everything's oh, fine. Okay. 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 Now, Richard James, as we all know, the yeah. best laid plans of mice and men can still go wrong. Oh, tell me about it. Uh, as well, I mean, it often happens in the Jerry Anson podcast itself, doesn't it? True. But, but hang on, uh, you're suggesting that there are plans. <laughs> <laughs> no, no plans, and everything goes wrong still somehow. Yeah. Now, although uh, the special effects crews who worked on the Jerry Anson shows were among the best in the world, mm-hmm. accidents did still sometimes happen. Yes. Uh, for example, as we've mentioned on the podcast itself, Derek Meddings and company once explosively dislodged a pile of debris in the rafters onto... Lou Grade and a group of suits, uh, yes. suit-wearing ITC executives. Yes. Oops. Mm. Whoopsie. But they all laughed. Uh, well, certainly Lou saw the funny side anyway. Good. I've also heard, possibly repeatedly, that a melting battery pack caught fire in the posterior oh, of a certain yes. officer that, on uh, Space Precinct. Did that, that happen? That rings a very painful bell, yes. Think Does might, it? Might be right, yes. I thought it might have just been an urban legend or a, mm, a rumour no, of no. some sort. I was there. It's true. But, you were the recipient of said melting posterior, mm. weren't you? Uh, but anyway, today's fab fact concerns a mishap on the set of Space 1999, Year 2. Okay. What's so the theme in... tune? <laughs> oh, oh no, ouch. No. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ouch. No, no, no. it's the uh, the loss of Barry Morse. No, it's not that either. Oh. In the episode, Catacombs of the Moon, which I'm sure you know very well, Mm -hmm. one character envisions a deathbed surrounded by flames on the lunar surface. Sounds cheery, doesn't it? It does, yes. Now, the results on screen, as I'm sure you'll all agree, look fantastic and almost almost Kubrickian in their surrealism. Right, okay. It's a lovely adjective, isn't it? I I am for now, yes. (laughs) Okay. Uh, But the filming was hardly dreamlike for the production team. One day in the middle of July, a heat wave caused mm. the fire to grow out of control and spread to the set, forcing the production to shut down for two whole days. Wow. Really? I know. Wow. Absolutely. Now, thankfully, there were no serious injuries that were reported, but it just does go to show that when playing with fire, one sometimes does get burned. Get burned. Yes. Uh, yes. I hope no one was burned, though. No, you said there were no well, injuries. Well, no, because there were no... Well, none reported unless it was in the no. very 70s. Sort of, yeah, don't wow. mention that. It'll be fine. <laughs> you know. Yeah, don't, put, don't put that on the Those burns will heal very nicely. Yeah. Who needs health and safety? Well, I mean, obviously it didn't change that much with your, you know, with your bum fire that you had. I, I mean, when you think about it... I, you said that's season two. That's interesting because, yeah. you know, very often the mistakes happen in the early days, don't they? On Space Precinct, I remember, of course. Yes, we had mm. the exploding battery pack in my back pocket. But we also had Ted Shackelford getting a splinter in his cheek. Yeah. I can't remember. Oh, well, I, I, on a point of health and safety, they did change something. And this wasn't as a result of uh, an injury or an accident. But it was a potential injury or accident. Do you remember... The main door to the station house would lift up, I think only in the first episode, Double Duty. And from then on, I think they decided, hang on, that's quite a heavy door. (laughs) And if anyone's standing underneath it and I let go of the pulley, because that's all it was that was lifting it up, uh, we might be in a spot of bother. Uh, So from then on, I think they had sliding doors into into the uh, the main station house. They did, you're right. They went from top down to side to side. That's right. Because you can imagine that actually, if we'd been doing that for a year, you know, something nasty could have happened. Yeah. Hmm. Crikey. Wow, you're absolutely right. Gosh. Now, there is a story as well, further back in time, I recall. Yeah. I think on Stirling Road, Yeah. where there was a severe miscalculation in terms of the volume of explosive used, and it created a pressure Ooh. wave that was so big that it blew down the back wall of the building. What? Yeah. Wow. Now, I've, I, I have not ha- had this confirmed directly from somebody who was there. Yeah. yeah. But I'm sure I've heard... It's hearsay now, isn't it? That's very mm. risky. Uh, I'm sure I've heard that, that that was a happening on one of those buildings on the on the Sterling, um, yeah, on right. the Sterling Road. I mean, we've just got to count ourselves lucky that we're just doing a podcast. Yeah, I, I think, mean, what I'm, could possibly go wrong? 
<laughs> Don't tempt fate. Ow! Oh, ow. <laughs> oh, God, I just trapped my finger in the two of recording booth. And oh. I've got a paper cut from the book of Fab Facts. So, yeah, <laughs> oh, this is a risky business. Wrong. They really think is. they had it tough with these explosives and fires. <laughs> but, you know, you try and record a podcast. Absolutely right. Mm. Anyway, there you go. Uh, accidents happen. Sometimes fires get out of control. But I think that probably, for health and safety reasons alone, brings mm, us to the yeah. end of this week's... Dangerous fire facts. fact! Oh, fire facts. dangerous oh. fire, fire facts. Mm. Yeah. yeah, okay. No, I think we were both on the money there. Uh, talking of on the money, our podstrons mm. have really hit gold this week by emailing okay. us at podcast at jerryanderson.com. Well, it means I'm going to read their emails out, which is... Of course. You know, mm. Hitting gold. Better than gold. To, of course it is. Uh, Far more for valuable. example... That's right. Now, I have one here from Jenny Davis, who we met in Birmingham, I think, saying, Hello, uh, Richard, Jamie and Chris. Jenny here, a.k.a. Rhapsody Angel, reporting live from good old Staffordshire. I hope you're well uh, and uh, have recovered from the Anderson weekend in Birmingham. Well, have you recovered, Jamie? Well, depends on your definition of recovery, I suppose. But yeah, I think so, (laughs) just about. (laughs) Yeah, uh, it was really great to meet you, says Jenny, after the live podcast, and I hope you all got to enjoy the cake I left with you, as I know that the cake I shared with quite a few of the podders, and they really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I enjoyed the whole weekend immensely, and it was great to meet up with loads of people from the podders Facebook group, as well as meet some new faces. I came to watch the uh, documentary at the Electric Cinema on the Friday evening, and I was blown away by how much detail went into it, and uh, it really did tug up my heartstrings. Thank you, and well done to Jamie and to Benfield for making this documentary so gripping and heartfelt. Uh, You've done the fandom project. Proud. I mean, I guess, Jamie, are you ever going to tire from hearing these messages from uh, people who've seen the documentary? Well, no, because they're all a f- reflection of how people feel about Dad and the shows, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, it, you yeah. know, I could, as much as Ben and I could say, oh, well, of course, you know, that's our, our art and uh, yes. that's the reason that, that people find it so uh, uh, so lovely. It's not really <laughs> about that. It's about we've kind of given a vehicle to Dad's story. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's the lovely bit, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Uh, The concert too, says Jenny. I was just completely amazed by it and I enjoyed every minute. Uh, What was really amazing was the amount of photos I got asked for with my best friend Chris, (laughs) who was cosplaying Captain Scarlet at Symphony Hall. I felt like I got asked for at least 100 photos. It was such an amazing experience and I hope to have more good opportunities like this in the near future. All the best from Jenny Davis, who says, P.S. If you wish to order any cake... Uh, my inbox is always open, especially Ooh. as Jamie fancies any red velvet cake, or if you, Richard, fancy any Battenberg. Oh, there we go. Right. Mm, I have a okay. feeling we might get back to you on that, Jenny. Now, very helpfully, uh, Terry from Hereford, you may remember in a previous podcast, gave us the timings, the dates of previous Milestone podcasts. Well, I remember he's well. carried on. He's carried on. <laughs> so, for example, <laughs> yes, Pod 500 uh, will be January 2028. 550 will be 3rd of July 2028. 600 will be two, uh, second, the 25th of December, Christmas Day on 2028. Oh, well, that's will be worth hanging podcast. around for. Absolutely. Uh, he then uh, includes a, a number of dates leading up to our 1,000th podcast. Have a guess. The date of release for our 1,000th podcast. If you can give me the month of the year, I'll get you a, an extra special Jerry Anderson FAB point. October 2034? Oh. Uh, oh, Jamie. So close. Yep. Our 1,000th podcast will be the 24th of October 2032. Oh, I went too far in the future. Oh, I mean, that's quite... That's, that's like 10 years away. Absolutely. It's within the bounds of possibility. I mean, I'm not saying I'll be doing it. But, you know... you will. <laughs> There's no Jerry Anderson uh, podcast without Richard James. Oh, shucks. Uh, Leah says, OK, hear me out. What if they were to recreate Four Feather Falls? It would really be interesting to see how they'd make it. SIG from Leah. Yeah. Would recreate be, it. it. As yeah. in, you know, with the old Reboot, marionettes. I suppose. Maybe. Live action. Would that work? I mean, it's, it's just a, a western, story. isn't it? It's just a western, probably. Well, I suppose uh, with the, with the magical element, but uh, yeah, 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 not for uh, me. Steve with three E's says, Hi, Jamie and Richard. A fellow podder, Hi, Doug, and I went to see A Life Uncharted at the Upfield Picture House last week. Such a fascinating ah. film, crafted with love, as you would expect. No spoilers, says Steve, but the uh, bit at the end, you know if you've watched it, finally broke me. The Q&A <laughs> at the end was such fun, and although prompted for some negativity, none was forthcoming. I, I tried my best to get them to... Cause, because, you know, I, I use the word contentious in the narration in the documentary because yeah, there are some yeah. contentious bits and pieces and I'm really happy for people to ask about it and ask views yes. and how we came to certain conclusions and that kind yeah. of thing. But yep. uh, no, no, none what? was none was there. There we are. 
Yeah, it was a pleasure to meet Crispin Morell, says uh, Steve, who I uh, yes. could have chatted to for hours. Such a pleasant chap. Uh, so as a follow-up yeah, to my question regarding Jerry's love of cars, mm. if he asked that on the night, he uh, did, I says, remember. Richard, what was your first car? <laughs> my first car, well, that would be Charlotte's car, was an old, it was a Volvo 340, the first oh, car I ever it? drove. I learnt quite late. I think I was about 29 or 30 when I passed my test, yeah. Oh, I didn't so know I you were a late bloomer. Uh, <laughs> Only in that respect. Uh, here's one from Bill Steer, <laughs> who says, uh, Dear Jamie, Richard, Chris, oh yeah, and everyone mm. just writing with belated thanks for the brilliant day in Birmingham a few weeks back. For everyone's sake, I'll keep this brief, but please take it as read that I loved it all. Um, oh. Yeah, he says it was great to enjoy the fun and energy of the live podcast recordings and then staying on at the wonderful electric cinema to watch Thunderbirds are go and then to end the brilliant day, the superb standby for action concert. John Coltrane was, of course, a thoroughly engaging host, overflowing with genuine enthusiasm for the shows and their music. Picking out a highlight is difficult, but for me, it might be the closing theme for Joe 90. Just ah, beautiful, says Phil. It was, it was beautifully done, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, now, the final one for now, but uh, from China, it's Paul Hyder, who's uh, riffing on our idea for, um, I can't even remember what it stood for now, SPA, what is a more imperative uh, command for our Podstron to get in touch, Podstron Amusement. Podstron Amusement, was it? <laughs> so he says, I mean, hi there, uh... listen to this, hi sensational podcast artists. Ooh, nice. I thought I'd send you a Send Podstron Amusement, since you've invented a superb pod acronym. Oh, we oh, must, of oh. course, take care not to get it confused with SPA 1999 <laughs> or the Spectrum Pursuit automobile or even a space police actor, if only we knew one. Nah, no idea. No. And then he says, Sayonara, Paul Abroad. Hey, there's another one. S- seriously, I mean, Paul. That's good awful. going, though, isn't it? Yeah. So there we are. Uh, do get in touch. I've got some more emails to read out a bit later, but send them in to uh, podcast at jerryanderson.com, I think is the address. Uh, and I'll well try remembered. my best to read them out next time. Thanks. Yeah, nice. And I can't believe you didn't give me any credit for that, for, for seriously, Paul, awful as SPA. Oh, I, can, I don't know. I, I that's, cannot, I was, I was cannot concentrated too hard on my... That, yeah, well, well I, done. I sh- that should have had a round of applause, really. Never mind. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you can save it for next time. For the next time I make it funny. Look forward. Anyway, mm. moving mm. swiftly on. I think we should. <clears throat> should we have some Jerry Anson news? Because there's always oh. Jerry Anson news. Go on, put us out of our misery. Okay. Yes, it's the Jerry Anderson newsy, news, 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 news. Yeah, yeah lovely. Slipped it in as ever. Uh, yes, I barely even noticed. I'm so used to it now. But it wouldn't be the same without it. So thank you for slipping it in. Now, uh, let's begin with Space 1999, the ultimate collection. Cool. Yeah, it's a recent release from Network, but for a long time, it's been the year one collection or the year two collection or the year uh-huh. one with a load of extras on it or whatever. It, it, but now, finally, they brought the whole thing together. You can get all your Space 1999s, the entire fix, all the extras, all the other bits and pieces uh, on one DVD or Blu-ray set. And they're massive. They've got blooming loads of discs, as you might expect really? for things yeah. like in the episodes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they are available from shop.jerryanson.com, would you mm. believe it? Mm, uh, this week, at some point, you will hear and maybe even see a trailer... For the soundtrack and the DVD Blu-ray edition of the concert, Stand oh. By For Action. Really? That was quick. I know. The team have been working their little socks off well uh, in the wake of the concert. So you'll be able to hear a few excerpts, see some of the visuals and uh, get a flavour for all the things that are coming up on the concert there. Also, we had a few questions recently about the Hoob Thunderbird cycling tops. Do you remember? I do, yes. Somebody somebody said something like, oh, will you do running tops? Yes, uh, they and did. And I think yes. I hinted to say, oh, maybe, if you're lucky. Well, they're here. Uh, they're actually called tech tops, but I think they're basically running tops. It's the same design from Thunderbirds vehicles, available as short sleeve T-shirts, uh, nice sort of sweat wicking material, uh, substantially less uh, expensive than the cycling tops. Oh, right, they are good. available from the store from this week, I think from Tuesday or Thursday, shop.jerryanderson.com. Cool. We've mentioned the screenings of the film a couple of times. Now, if you would like to see the film this week, then if you're listening on the day of release, well, we're, we are doing a free screening tonight 
can you believe it? That's the 16th. Right. At the Carmarthen Bay Film Festival in Llanathli. How's um, that going to work? For free screening? Yeah, we're opening the Carmarthen Bay Film Festival. Oh, uh, I see. So you can go on to the Carmarthen Bay Film Festival Facebook page. There's a link there to their Eventbrite ticketing thing. You have Brilliant. to get a ticket from Eventbrite, but it is free. And there'll be a Q&A with me and Ben afterwards. Uh, then if you're up in Scotland, we're at the Glasgow Film Theatre on the 18th. That's Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And on Saturday, we're at Norden Farm in Maidenhead, which obviously has lots of links to all things Anderson, the site of the first studio building at Islet Park. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, uh, Slough Studios and all the other connections. And Dad actually had his last ever office in Maidenhead itself. Did he? Which you may not know. Yes. No, I didn't know that. No. Yes, he, him and his uh, lovely uh, PA Janice... Uh-huh. Uh, we're in a, a little office space in the centre of town there, which was rather lovely. Right. Um, so yes, and, and also I discovered that Joy and Linda from uh, Dad's first marriage, they used to walk to school across what was Norden Farm when it was actually a farm. Yeah, that's extraordinary. Yeah. So that's a really nice link, Great. isn't it? Anyway, so yeah. there's a few there. We're also going to be at MCM the following week. Uh, we've got other screenings coming up across the country, Manchester Derby, loads of other places. Uh, so keep an eye on jerryanderson.com slash documentary for more information there. Mm-hmm. If you are in the mood for a bargain, can I recommend Always. you go to the Anderson Entertainment Outlet store on eBay? Mm-hmm. There's yes. over a hundred new listings of uh, returns and uh, end of line stuff, uh, and you can find that by going to ander.sn slash eBay. That's a n d r dot s n slash eBay, uh, and you can find a load of listings there. And finally, this Friday we've got a flash sale on Friday. However, it's an Ander app exclusive. Oh, is it? As in an Ander app exclusive, so you can I only see- get it through the app. Yes. Wait until Friday. Uh, you'll get a notification via the app, which tells you what's for sale and how to get it. Uh, but it is only via the Ander app. So just right. search for that on uh, Google Play or whatever the Play Store is called, or mm-hmm. the uh, Apple App Store. I never know mm-hmm. what these things are called, but yeah. where you get your apps on your device, basically. Yeah. yeah. You can get it there. Yeah. Nice. Anyway, there you go. That's it. That's the end of the stuff from me. So that's the end of this week's Jerry Anderson News. That was the news. That was the news. Oh, lovely. You I'm look so pleased with yourself. Uh, oh. I'm finished. I haven't finished. Uh, Sorry. Yep. There you are. Right, finish now. That's why you're looking so pleased with yourself, because you knew <laughs> you were going to really milk it this week. Yeah, yeah, always. That's right. Uh, now, you're listening to the Jerry Anderson Podcast. Of course, you can... Uh, uh, subscribe to us right now on whichever platform and on whichever planet you're listening to us from. Just hit the subscribe or follow or whatever button you've got on your uh, on your app there. And, uh, well, that way you'll be sure to listen to every new podcast the moment it drops on a Monday morning. I mean, it's quite early, I think, sometimes. So you've got to get up quick. Uh, also, of course, you can leave us a nice rating. That's a review or a rating. Let us know how, mm. what you think of the podcast and how we're doing. And if you can think of any recommendations as to how we should be doing it, that would also be useful. Oh, yes, because, we're always up for any ways to improve yeah. it, aren't we? Yeah, we really are. Uh, and finally, of course, you can copy the link and share it on all your socials and let your friends know exactly what you're listening to. Back to the email bag. Steve Beresford. Now, this is an interesting one. He says, sorry to bother you, but I just came across something interesting and I thought I'd pass it on to you. When Jerry's mother changed the family name from Abrahams to Anderson, is it possible that she used the name of the hospital where Jerry and presumably Lionel were born, which was the Elizabeth Garrett Anderson and obstetric hospital. I did not think of yeah. that. It's yeah. possible, isn't it? I mean, but she could have had a favourite name before that. I suppose could have done. And could have done. Brought, or maybe that's the reason she had yeah. a favourite name. That's right. It's a nice it's, thought. It's, it's a maybe, but probably one that's that we'll right. never know the answer to. It's that's one of those right. things that will be lost to the mists of time. Exactly. A bit like my officer, Orin Underpants. Uh, if Steve <laughs> continues, by the way, could I persuade you to promote a Podders radio show? Stephen Height, who's a member of our Facebook podcast group, does a Tuesday night local hospital radio request show from six till eight. It's available online at live.radiowarnford.com. Uh, and you can find him there on a Tuesday night between 6 and 8, and lots of podstrons join in and send in their requests. Oh, so that's a nice, nice. place to, to hang out. Now, I've got a really long email here. Shall I do it now or save it for later? Oh, no, do it now. I'm ready. Well, this is from Ian Stevens, who says, Hi, Jamie, Richard and Chris. I've just listened to Pod 204, and I was stunned to hear about the Joe 90 movie in Fab Facts. 
Now, I'm not sure about any other Podstrons, but I'm quite glad it didn't see the light of day, along with the rumoured Space 1999 reboot, which was going to be called Space 2099, and the UFO movie that was touted a few years ago. I know that the live-action Thunderbirds movie wasn't a Hollywood movie, I uh, believe it was Working Title who made it, and I do believe it was directed by Jonathan Frakes, who seemed to miss the point of Thunderbirds completely, and in fact mm. gave us a movie that was more Spy Kids than Thunderbirds. Uh, the only redeeming feature of this movie was the performance of Sophia Miles and uh, Ron Cook as Penelope and Parker. Honestly, I prefer the movie industry just to leave the Jerry Anderson shows well alone, unless you were all involved in the movie's development and filming, etc., because the live action, that live action movie proved that some people just don't get it and are not fans of the original productions. What Jerry and his team created is special. There was nothing like it on TV at the time. And it still stands up extremely well against modern science fiction. With the audio adventures that Anderson Entertainment have produced, along with Big Finish, you've repeatedly shown how much love and respect that you have towards the legacy of Jerry Anderson. And it's those kind of stories that us Podstrons would love to see on screen. I think we all know that that's unlikely and that the audiobooks are the way forward. Fairly sure we're all content with that because, as I've said, there's something special. But I very much doubt that Hollywood could ever capture the essence of those original shows in the way that you can. Uh, it says, if you have any plans to come to Dorset or Hampshire to show the documentary in a cinema, let me know because I'd love to come along and watch it and join in the Q&A. Very best regards to you all from Ian Stevens. That's a point, isn't it? Because uh, it's very often we talk about, you know, proposed reboots and you know, UFOs, Space 1999 and... Joe 90. Joe 90. Sometimes it's in the press that someone's bought it and it's going to be rebooted. There's going to be a movie. And actually, perhaps we should be grateful that that never happened because it means we're left with the original, perhaps perfect show in its mm. original form not messed about with not diluted not altered i think there's something vision. to be said for the time capsule of those things mm. you know that the the reason thunderbirds worked so well at the time and was made in the way it was was because of so many of the constraints or lack thereof depending on what perspective you're looking from yeah um of the 1960s you know yeah. that the, the the constraints in terms of effects and use of puppets meant that they pushed those as far as they possibly could the possibly the freedom of spending in some ways meant they could do that in a mm -hmm. way that would be you know is is reserved for the top 0.01% of tv shows today yeah yeah it, different in terms of um, kind of real world aspirations and fascinations and all that kind of thing mm. um, and it's sort of yeah it it kind of lives in its own little timeless universe and that's why it keeps on perpetuating but if you try and take those elements and make it something new from today yes it can't be exactly the same mm. so it's yeah it's it's a really interesting question isn't it it's one yeah you know, and, and if somebody does it and it's really successful and it's either an exact match with the original or something completely different yeah you'll have you know a percentage of the audience who love and hate Either one of those. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I suspect if something were announced tomorrow, a reboot of Space 1999 or a movie, a UFO, I think I'd probably our first reaction would be, well, hey! And then it'll be, ooh, now I'm worried. What are they mm. going to do to it? Yeah, that's the tricky thing, isn't it? And it's it's so yeah. hard to do anything. And it's so hard to do anything new. Mm. In a way, I think it's kind of harder to, to do something from the past justice. Mm. Yeah. Uh, there we are. Uh, send your emails in, podcast at jerryanderson.com. It's quite easy. I'll read them out next time. Yes, and he does. That's he's it. just done it. He's proven uh, he's, he's, just you know, does what it says yep. on the tin. Absolutely right. Yep. Now, Richard, is it time for an interview? I think it might be. Yes, yes, please, yes. <laughs> and please, to stop God, talking yes. to me. <laughs> okay, right, well, that's that's rude. Uh, now, well, we know what it is. It's part three yeah. of Ben Page's chat with Keith Alexander, also known as Keith Alexander Buckley. Which is his uh, his name these days, um, yeah. and this time he's obviously going to talk about his later work with Dad, uh, in particular um, Lieutenant Ford in UFO or Lieutenant, depending on who's saying it. So thanks, Keith, for joining us. Here's part three of three with Keith Alexander slash Buckley. When you heard uh, Jerry's ideas for things like Joe Ninety, the nine year old super spy with the brain pattern transfer. Or things like Doppelganger, where there's a, a exact duplicate planet on the other side of the sun. What did you make of some of these these wild and wacky ideas? Well, the whole point of them is that they weren't completely wacky. I mean, we've seen extraordinary things happen, certainly in my longer lifetime than yours, Ben. Um, mm -hmm. Seeing 
things come and go and uh, often seen the reason f- why they came and went. So um, uh, there are lots of people who do believe in, uh, in doppelgangers. It's a, a spiritual thing apart from any other. And uh, the this, this spirit world is something we know very little about. Mm. I, um, as far as uh, super intelligence and things like that is concerned, I mean, there, it doesn't have to necessarily be your intelligence. It could be implanted now or a, 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 a means of accessing it. I mean, look at Wi-Fi has done, the, t- the things that we could access that we never could before. Well, um, the, the mobile phone we have is, is, uh, couldn't uh, accommodate a room full of computers. So we've moved on. Extraordinary things uh, will continue to happen, and uh, yeah. it's in in many respects. Um, I just can't think of the uh, science fiction writer behind two thousand and one, but uh, he and and Jerry and others, uh, Arthur yeah. Arthur Clark. Yep, that's right. I think Arthur C. Clark. I think. But anyway, he uh, his predictions hmm? came true. Um, Nostradamus. Many of his things have come true. Uh, who knows? Uh, but that's that's the magic. So you, your approach was to take it seriously, no matter how, well, you know, fantastic it might well, have seemed. Um, certainly, in performance, we have to do that. No matter. Yes, we had a bit of fun. We used to mm. leg pull uh, over all kinds of things. In fact, uh, uh, I think Jerry's greatest irritation was that we turn up and perform in front of the microphone as if we were super marionettes ourselves, with the exaggerated movements and. Uh, as if we were puppets ourselves. He, 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 that, that didn't amuse him, I have to say. He, he thought we were mickey-taking, and, but we were just having fun. I, I can imagine. Um, <laughs> Sylvia, on the other hand, was um, very free and easy and, and helpful, etc. Uh, and I think she was behind a lot of these ideas as well, though um, I don't think she took credit for them. But she was a, a good writer and a good manager, too. Very much so. And, and a good talent mm. spotter. She, we didn't have to tell her what we could do. She seemed to know uh, how she knew. I don't know. Maybe she'd done a research. So coming to something like uh, UFO, how was it different from working on the, the puppet shows? Even though there was, there was a lot of the same crew. I mean, you had Jerry and you had Sylvia and you had Dave Lane. Oh, it was... Uh, and oh, Jeremy Wilkin yeah. was there and... It was just part of the family. We just were doing something else in a, in a different fashion. I mean, and we did it differently, etc. Uh, I have to say that um, I'll give away a couple of secrets here. I had dialogue, which uh, was almost impossible to learn because it just didn't make sense. It's just made up space stuff with all kinds of vectors and this, that, and the other. Well, uh, I can't tell you, the girls had terrible trouble with this stuff and they used to come to me and say how is it that you're so smooth you you understand this stuff so well you know you're always so authoritative etc uh, I, I never told them that i wrote some of it down on the console i was just reading it <laughs> now i i did i did know it but i i was oh, it was there if i needed it if yeah. i was about to to dry as we say dry means you you dry up. You've forgotten your lines. Go so blank. I never dried. And, yeah. and um, what else? Um, oh, yes. Because of my coming and going, and I didn't have a major role, I kept saying to Cherry, uh, look, what's, you know, what's so wrong with your cowboys and Indians and, all the, and, and the shoot-ups that you have in, in so much of particularly American television is that bullets fly all over the place – Mm-hmm. amongst the white guys, that every bullet hits an Indian. Every bullet hits, hits the bad guy, you know. Why don't the good guys get killed? So I volunteered to say, well, look, I'm expendable. Kill me off, you know. Give me a good episode. I'm, all actors like a good death. Give me yeah. a good death scene, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but he never got round to doing it. He <laughs> probably thought, I might come in handy somehow. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> what did he say when you came to him with that idea? Did he say that oh, that's a good idea? Or Oh, he said, not now, Keith, not now. You know, <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> We're making a TV show here. Yeah, yeah. Just get on with it. You know? <laughs> that's funny. I, I don't think I, 
I don't think I was ever coming at him with lots of suggestions, but I think I might have had a few. Yeah. <laughs> what, one of the things I like about your performance in that show is how you can, uh, you can take some of those things that you say, like uh, vectors and technical gobbledygook, and that they're, all the drama is in the, you know, the countdown or whatever it is that you're saying. How do you, you know, from, and you're, you're sitting on a stage, right? You're in front of a console prop, and you have to somehow create this drama of, you know, maybe a special effect that's happening off camera. How do you, how do you get to that place of imagination, and how do you, uh, how do you convince the audience that it's, that it's for real? I guess it's sensitivity for a start. It's also understanding what you're doing. Uh, it's also respect for what you're doing. I mean, too many actors uh, are so self-absorbed that uh, that's all there is to it. Now, an audience is watching this. Kids are imitating this. Kids are getting pleasure from it. Uh, what can you do? If you haven't got the actual experience, it's, uh, you can't necessarily fake that. So you create a mood within yourself that's appropriately well, it's appropriate, whether it's serious or whatever it might be. Uh, it's called emotion memory. It's a, a, it's a palette of emotions, just like a, a palette of colors for a painter. And they're the tools of an actor. I mean, if you can't cry at will, you know, uh, particularly for a woman, you're not going to get a lot of work. Um, <laughs> you've got to have a smile that's genuine. Yeah. Um, in fact, one of the most underrated emotions is the holding back of tears because what is m most exciting is somebody has a strong emotion and you don't know what it is, but you sense it. Now, so if a person is trying not to cry, but the ears, the, sorry, the eyes, the lower lids start to brim with tears that will unman you, that will make you cry because you cannot imagine how much grief is to come. The moment they cry, it's a degree of grief that you can empathize with or not, depending on how cold your heart is or warm it is. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's what it's all about. You can take the cues from the director about the pacing of it, uh, what, you, what your eyes might be telling, you to do by what what you're looking at, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So sometimes there's an insincerity in the emotion that uh, creates the emotion you want because you haven't murdered somebody, right? But how can you perhaps create the kind of appalling excitement that somebody might have as they murder somebody? Well, it has to be a fake thing; it can't be the real thing. But if it's close enough, it will it suffice. Hmm. Any other stories you remember from UFO or well, uh, directors? I, one of my best friends on UFO was Vladek uh, Shabel. Uh, yes. Uh, Vladek Rudolf Spigniew Shabel Stipinski, uh, a wonderful Polish actor, a leading Polish actor in his country, along with his wife, who also was... Uh, a leading actress um, who uh, fled, you know, um, the Russians, and uh, he made he made very valuable contributions to UFO. I have to tell you myself the way he played his parts. <laughs> yes, he was he was a real highlight of the show and and a few other shows as well. He uh, I know he appeared in uh, a Bond film and a few other things, but kind of. Uh, Unfortunately, don't hear about him too much, but a great talent. Now, he, he died uh, an awful death with a... Oh, did he? I uh, didn't know a, that. A, stom a, stomach, a stomach ulcer bursting, oh, etc. Yes, we... Uh, it's so yeah. sad. Uh, I actually, um, I was delighted to, to work with him and get to know him very, very well because I saw him in uh, Polanski film, Polanski's first film, and, and Vladek's, called Knife in the Water. And it was a black and white very effective film shown at a Sydney University drama festival. And um, so it was uh, a delight to get to meet him and, and learn an awful lot about the war, etc. Um, 
As a boy in the war, he had uh, a little dog called Ersatz. It was a Dachshund. And uh, because the Germans liked the Dachshund, he was able to go through German-occupied places and distribute food to people hiding out. Wow. Yeah. Well, after, after UFO, you, I suppose, got busier and busier as an actor, and you had some scheduling conflicts, I guess, that prevented you from, from coming back and working with the Andersons more? Or uh... Yes, I, I stayed on and uh, worked with Ben Gazzara and uh, Peter Falk and, uh, oh, God, just can't think of his name for the moment. Um, on Husbands and other, other movies in Hollywood did. I, I also had a stint working for the BBC in the United Nations, which I very much enjoyed. And um, then eventually, uh, after oh, Hanover Street and a few other movies, I, uh, I got into writing, and, uh, and I'm, uh, I've got a 25-episode Gilded Age of uh, late... Um, 19th century uh, United States, connected with uh, uh, Washington Roebling, the builder of the Brooklyn Bridge, but not just about him, all the events of that time as they impinged on his life. And then I've, uh, I've got a, a love story in the pipeline, which uh, is uh, hopefully going to be a movie. Uh, wow. It's uh, not just another love story, I have to say. <laughs> That's the title. That's a great title. So, yeah. So I keep busy. Yeah. Still, you're an extremely busy man. Thank you for uh, taking some time to, uh, to do this interview for the podcast. Do you, uh, do you have anywhere that people can find you or follow your work online or any place where they can keep an eye out for not just another love story when it comes out? Well, I'm, I've not indulged in uh, the social media thing because I never want to really get caught up in it because it can be very consuming. And uh, yes. So there's unfortunately uh, no easy place if someone's clever enough to find my agent, as some people have from time to time. I've, I've always answered every bit of correspondence I, I've received. You're very kind. Uh, very diligently and appreciated that. I've even uh, got letters that weren't meant for me and uh, did my best to uh, <laughs> impersonate. As the person that died, you see, as the person that died, I sent a letter back from the grave, you know. Oh, dear. <laughs> with, <laughs> which perhaps uh, confused things a little bit, but I think uh, there was a, a PS to explain. Um, but um, no, uh, perhaps when um, these things uh, become more public, I might assume a more public image and therefore yeah. uh, people will know. But there's my son's Facebook group, uh -huh. but um, um, maybe you can, uh, he can let you have that, Ben. Um, sure. But no, I... To the people out there who uh, thank you very much for listening and uh, who hopefully have enjoyed, uh, not just what I've said, uh, rambling though it is, uh, my work, uh, I, I want to thank you for being the audience, the very important part of the whole deal, and you're not given enough consideration or consultation to see what you want so that we uh, can satisfy you. So. Uh, Make yourself known, speak up about these things because things change and things get better. It's, uh, it's a pretty difficult world we're living through at the moment, but uh, if the good people of the world sit on their hands, then we're not going to get the world we want, whether it's climate, whatever it might be. So uh, we've all got to be willing to do our part and pull together. Uh, the pandemic should have taught us that, and sadly it hasn't, and one often wonders what will unite us. It might be the naughty green men come back for us, but uh, <laughs> who knows? Well, we're, that's we're a, still that's... learning, but uh, yeah. thank, you, yeah. thank you for that well, message of hope. That's really nice. We, uh, well, we really appreciate you coming on the show. Well, all the best to you, Ben, and, uh, and everyone who's been listening. Thank you very much. Thank oh, you, Ben, and thank lovely. you, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Thanks for joining yeah. us. It's not, again, so nice of a mixture of 
fans, people that worked on the shows, yeah. people that are writing about the shows now yeah. or doing related work or inspired by. So, That's right. yeah, Keith, brilliant stuff. As we mentioned last week, Keith keeps a very low profile on social media, but you can reach out to him through his son, Rhett's Facebook mm-hmm. page, Rhett being R H E double T. Mm-hmm. And you can see the link to Rhett's Facebook page in the show notes of this podcast. Great. Yeah, very nice. And uh, who's coming great, next week? Do we know? Uh, next week is another interview by producer Ben Page. Thanks, oh, I Ben. Like that. Good, yeah, that's um, great. But I think we'll keep it as a surprise, shall we? You mean it's very different know. to this one? Yeah. No, I, I do know probably, okay. but I'm not 100 okay. percent sure, so I don't want to spoil Fair it. Fair enough. Now, uh, I'm going to head on over to our Facebook group. That's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash podsterons, where people mm-hmm. have been uh, joining in all the usual fun there, uploading pictures of their latest merchandise that they bought from the Jerry Anderson store, uh, also their cosplay. People have been out and about as well to various conventions and posting their, Ooh, their pictures of the, of the fun and games they've been out up to. In the yeah. world. But now, Jamie, here's a wonderful thing. The Podstrons have their first Podstron baby. No, what? Rob Gwilliam posted just a couple of days ago I know it's not podcast related but I'd like to introduce you all to Arthur John Stephen William born 1056 this morning weighing 6 pounds and 14 ounces P.S. he will be listening to the podcast on the way home (laughs) quite right too Amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. That's lovely, uh, isn't it? Isn't that lovely? Uh, it may be Williams. It may be, uh, it, that may be uh, Arthur Williams or William. I don't know because I've, I've written it down twice and I've written it down different each time. That's my fault. Brilliant. And not Anyone's worse. guess. <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 is that jo- John middle name? Is that John Tracy? Do we guess? It uh, could well be. Uh, the Arthur? We, is there an Anderson Arthur anywhere? Or a Stephen? Well, Arthur, Arthur the wine waiter who uh, of course. lent his name uh, of to Parker. Course. I mean, that's who he's named it, after. If these aren't Must the be. reasons, then something's gone very <laughs> wrong in the world. Uh, Deck Goodall posted, if Captain Scarlet had been a Cockney, what lines of his would you have loved to have heard in that accent? Uh, Martin Smith posted, <laughs> Mistrons, you're having a laugh. Come on then, I'm up for it. But uh, Dex himself suggested, Lunar Controller, you're under arrest, you mug. <laughs> I don't know what's going on now. <laughs> Someone needs to do a voiceover uh, video of that. Yes, they do, yeah. <laughs> uh, Steve Beresford again says, uh, just wondering, forgetting anything in the show, what real-life technology did Jerry and team help push towards? For example, the rolling roads and puppet solenoids. So what real-life technology did they push forward? Well, re- really, video assist is the main one, isn't it? Ah, uh-huh. uh, Which Being... to people... Well, so originally, uh, back in the late 50s or very, very early 60s, uh, really only the camera operator could see what was going on and you trusted them entirely. But uh-huh. the rest of the crew had no clue what had just been shot or exactly what the camera was seeing. Ah, yes. Um, so Dad uh, commissioned one of the camera companies, I believe, to fit a prism into the eyepiece part of the camera to split it off to a separate video feed so that they could have monitors on the floor Gotcha. Which is now, it sounds, that's like every day, that's normal. Absolutely. Yeah. All this stuff, you think, yeah, of course, that's how you do it. But that wasn't how it was done. So really, he was was credited, I think, by the British Kinematographic Society, Mm -hmm. BKSTS, I think, with basically having having developed Video Assist and changed the film industry forever. Absolutely right. Yeah, great. Now, the Independent newspaper this week reported that scientists have observed the largest ever quake recorded on Mars. Ooh. Uh, The report says NASA's InSight lander has recorded the largest quake ever observed on Mars and any planet other than Earth, a magnitude 5 quake that rumbled the red planet on May the 4th. While NASA scientists are still analysing the data, the results so far were impressive enough to elicit an excited wow from Thomas Zerbuchen, who is the assistant administrator of NASA's science directorate, who shared his results on Twitter. Uh, Tom Hodden on our Facebook group suggests Mistrons, Zelda... Or rock snakes. All three. Could be all three. Having yeah. a party. Absolutely right. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. Keep your eye out in the press for anything that you think might be, uh, could possibly have a, 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 an Anderson uh, cause, because there's often scientific uh, stories in the press. You think, well, that sounds just like that episode of Thunderbirds. Uh, let us know if you spot right. them. Yeah, and uh, maybe post them on the Facebook group as well. There are a few questions to ask, uh, or rather answer, if you want to be part of our Podstrons group, uh, and we'll let you in. More and more each week I see the number goes up, which is lovely, because it's a very friendly uh, community of Jerry Anderson fans. One of the friendliest on all of the internet, I think ever. you'll find. Yeah, that's true. All right, ever. Go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Richard James. Uh, Jamie Anderson. I don't know if you spotted, but 
Chris Dale has now perfected his entire dance routine. Oh, he has, yes. Includes some interesting uh, swimming motions and yeah. smooching. Yeah, it's a bit I, weird, isn't it? I think I know what he's he's doing it to. What, what's that then? Uh oh. It's, it's Marina, isn't it? It's the closing it titles of Stingray. He's I can doing tell. sort of interpretive. I mean, yeah. he's, he's scowling at me now. But oh, anyway, dear. hopefully, <clears throat> uh, uh, fingers crossed, Chris will post the results of his special um, Aquamarina dance to yeah. TikTok, and you can see yeah, it look there. Forward to that. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait to see it myself. But in the meantime, he's going to be very busy because he's got to do the randomizer where he takes his randomizer device, presses the red button, randomly selects a random episode of a random Jerry Anderson series, watches it, and tells you some things about it, and says quite a lot of amusing things normally. So now you've finished dancing, Chris, do you want to do the randomizer? Go on then. Right, that's it, Marina. We're alongside. Boarding tube all locked on? Okay, let him in then. <laughs> what a beauty to say hello to Big Dave. Yes, Marina, I'm sorry, but I did tell you today's button presser was a bit of an odd one. What's that supposed to mean, astronaut? Oh, simply that in the one episode you appeared in, you mostly irritated everybody and acted like a total creep. Mmm, definitely. And you're doing it again now? Now that's the human mind for you. Doubt and disbelief. Mr. Riley, the only reason we invited you onto our eagle today was to press the button on the randomizer. So, if you would please do so, and then clear off, that would be lovely. Well... Get ready to dig for gold. Thank you. And let's see what it decides to give us today. Well, you're, you're talking as though it's human. Well, I sometimes wonder. I don't buy it. Think positive. Okay, positive it is then. So, what have we got, Dave? Right, let's have a look. That one. Let's see. Ah, okay. Well, a very good choice considering the show has just come out on Blu-ray. Yes, it's Stingray. Well, that should do it. Indeed. Time for a close look at the man from the Navy. The closer, the better. Marina, you have my permission to throw him into the vacuum of space. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. No, you don't, little lady. So, we welcome back to the randomizer Stingray. But Stingray on Blu-ray. At least, uh, I am watching this in HD, as many of you now will be, because the... Uh, the gorgeous Stingray Blu-ray set is now officially out there. At last, finally, and it looks absolutely beautiful. And uh, here's an episode I remember quite fondly from my uh, my younger days. This is The Man from the Navy. We open on a nice, uh, slightly tense sequence of Stingray just cruising along, minding its own business, with this other submarine lurking close behind them. And I love that uh, instantly, just just by the markings and the shape of the thing, you can tell it's it's a human ship. It's not uh, not an alien craft, but it's still going to open fire on them. Bones, emergency action. Green nine zero. And this is very very well done. This opening and uh, very well and convincingly uh, acted by the the voice actors here, considering what we're about to to find out. All this is uh, is is really to do with. There's this missile closing in on them. Don't seem to be able to shake it off. That's quite unfortunate, though, where they've they've flown Stingray across the set and then they've clearly called cut so that they could put the missile on. But in doing that, they've um, they've disturbed quite quite noticeably some of the foliage. Um, so you get this sudden jump cut. It's uh, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate, but hey ho, it is it is what it is. It's just how they would uh, have to have, have, have done this back in the day. In fast. Oh, and of course the music. The music and the models. Back 20 seconds. Everything's so good here. Zero. Green, 180. I'm also liking this... Uh, the, sh the shots behind Troy and Phones looking forward at the screen, what they're seeing as Stingray's cruising past all these rocks. Um, that looks quite convincing as well. The, uh, the missile, by contrast, has developed a slight droop. But it's so nearly going to hit them. Impact 10 seconds. They've both got their frowning faces on. Frowning faces with sweat. That's how we know it's serious. Impact 5 seconds. 
Even the fish seem disturbed by this. They're running away from it. It's getting closer. Right. Oh no. Get back down. Clunk. I love that as well. After all that build up. Dead on target phones. Guess the Navy's new marine missile is a 100% success. Yeah. <laughs> the sudden instant release of tension with that clunk, and we're back to the normal faces and happy old Troy and phones. I'm in, Captain Jordan. Because it wasn't uh, an attacking aggressor person, it was just the man from the Navy. Jordan here. Captain Jacques Jordan. Jordan from Stingray. Who is very French, in case you did not know. Greenville. Roger, Stingray. I'm surfacing. I'll see you back there. And of course, being a, a man from the Navy, that's as good an excuse as any to have this character and this uh, ship associated with all the best bits of music from the show, including March of the Oysters here, and I suspect the big gun theme probably will make an appearance later on. And a rare shot of uh, the island of Lemoy, the house on the island of Lemoy, with a vessel passing in front of it. My brain always tells me that there is a shot of Stingray passing the island of Lemoy, but I don't think there actually is. That's just something my head has invented. X20, report. Oh, Titan, ruler of the underwater city of Titanic. Oh, Titan. Oh, great Titan. You deserve the testing of a new marine missile by the Terranians. Of what use is this report to me, Agent X20? The missile would be an invaluable... What does Titan do all day? He just sits on his throne. How can we get the missile? There will be another test tomorrow. Yeah, he just sits or sits here, waiting for someone to uh, to pass on information that he can use. The chance to gain revenge on Tempest. And I love as well that this is one of those episodes where it's not entirely Titan focused because this uh, Navy guy, Jacques Jordan, is um, is enough of an antagonist. And I, I love it with this show where you get episodes where you're chugging along quite happily and then, oh, suddenly Titan's involved in this. That's a turn I wasn't expecting, but okay, it's very welcome. This missile puts you well behind. It's almost like you, know, you have episodes where Titan is the main villain and you have episodes where Titan is kind of the sub-villain. The Navy's got it over the wasps this time. Now, if you two are going to start arguing about rivalry between the two services again, you can do it in the standby lounge. Marina and Atlanta are there waiting for you. Now, Marina, you want to throw a dinner party tonight at your apartment, is that right? Marina's got plans for a dinner party. I love as well that we get uh, the idea of uh, a resentment here between the wasps and the World Navy. To be known as the senior service tempest until the wasps were inaugurated. Yeah. I've never been keen on th this shot, and I think there's one in the big gun where they're walking along the corridor to the standby lounge, and they're just having the puppets walk along. Well, they're not even having the puppets walk. They're just running footage behind them rather than actually walking them. Hunted that tub stingray down just like a homing pigeon. Oh. I mean, the Navy's got nothing to touch, huh? Okay. Yeah, be nice about stingray. Off. Listen, boys, we're all off duty now, and Marina has arranged a special dinner party. So what say we all forget about work? I love Marina's smiling face as well. She looks so happy about this. Especially when she nods. Oh, dear. So, off to dinner at Marina's. She's never invited me, by the way. Hey. Bom, bom. I got Marine. Oh, this, um, this music hasn't appeared in the show yet. I'm sure, looking forward to it. Yeah. An instrumental version of I've Got Something to Shout About, but that's about... Up too much, huh? Reckon six or seven episodes away? Atlanta. Well, Troy, the meals in the Tower Diner could be better. Oh, <laughs> you wouldn't. We never see the Tower Diner. I'd like to know what's uh, what goes on in there. Don't get mad. Ah, here comes Marina with the first course. Ah, and um, her her hair has has seen better days. I'm I'm not mad about the. Uh, she looks quite frumpy in her choice of hairdos there. What did you think of the disc, Jacques? Wonderful, Atlanta. You like the music, huh? All our vessels have taped music piped right through the cabin. In the Wasps, we haven't got time to listen to music while we're on duty. Your yeah, ships are so noisy, you wouldn't hear it anyway. <laughs> now listen, Jordan. If we wanted music, we could have it. But oh, I love all this. Business. We have our fun. We've we're got a huge, what looks like a lobster as the main course. I can see that you are Atlanta. 
That's it. Jack is sat next to Atlanta making advances and uh, even tapping her hand while looking very lovingly into her eyes. Must be nice for you to get away from such a dull uniform. <laughs> and it's a wonderful performance from David Graham, but the puppet is is a great creation as well. Tempest. But Atlanta is a woman. Firstly, he's not this big hunk of a guy. He's actually quite short, but he's got a very punchable face, and yet he still has this sort of handsome quality that you could imagine would would attract particularly Atlanta. was designed for just that. Not poor old Marina, because Marina's very upset at how all this dinner party is ruined. Oh, she's closing her eyes and shaking her head. Troy, I'm surprised at you. Oh, I feel so sorry for her. Listening to all this junk. Good night. Oh, Troy, come back. Don't get so head up. Let him go, Phones. If he wants to act like a spoiled child, then let him. Oh, dear. Poor Marina. Her first party, and it's... Uh, it almost reminds me of those sort of instructional videos from the 50s. Don't let your party go on like this. Don't have arguments about the merits of the Wasps versus the World Navy. Um or drive away in a very fast car that looked like it was about to crash off the road there. Troy didn't mean to ruin your party. It's just what he does. He'll be okay when he's cooled down. Oh, Marina's crying. She's got a lovely house here. And it looks very nice in HD again. She's also so thoroughly stocked with booze. Let's enjoy the evening. Yes. Why not? I'll put on another disc. That solves everything in Stingray World and XL5, I think. Put on another disc. I'll be glad when he gets back to his precious navy. I do like uh, Atlanta's um, frowning face as well, because it's not so much a frowning face as a pouting face. Women, they're just as fickle as the sea. And there's a there's a tree over there. I don't like that tree. Oh, uh, stock footage of the sea there. Oh. At last, my chance to gain vengeance on Troy Tempest. You understand what has to be done? I want to put subtitles up there. No, nope, haven't understood a word. Your mission and make no mistakes. The missile test takes place tomorrow morning. Ooh. So. A test crew standing by, sir. Okay. Another missile test. Mission stations. But we still have the fallout from last night's party to deal with. I do love this as well with Stingray sometimes. And also Thunderbirds. We have these emotional subplots to deal with. The sooner this job's over, the quicker Jordan gets the heck out of here. Jordan's already out at sea. I loved as well that um, there was a nice bit of puppetry there of Troy putting down a book he was reading. Sir. Right, Lieutenant. Sound launch stations. Here we go, phones. About last night, Troy, I guess Jordan made you mad, huh? That's the understatement of the year. This is a clever place to have a conversation. He's out with Marina for you. Thanks, Bones. I guess it was rough on her. I sent her some flowers this morning. Although I do wonder what's going on with all those all those various floors that they pass as they go down the injector tubes. Every floor seems to have like a random pile of wood. Just wooden planks. Oh, well, Marina's happy. She got a... A bunch of flowers from Troy and an apology card. How about Atlanta? Right now, she's the last person I'd send flowers to. But she's got even more flowers. Because of course she would have. How sweet. Flowers from the captain. Thanks for a swell evening. Love, Jacques. Tower from Stingray. I love how everybody in this show has got the same handwriting. Have you ever noticed that with various cards and like the two cards there, they both got the same handwriting. Very nice, beautiful handwriting. I think the uh, the um, place mat or uh, the name cards on the table in Tom Thumb Tempest are also written very beautifully in the same way. Ah, <sighs> it's a very nice looking show now on Blu-ray. It just you know, it really makes you appreciate. How how utterly terrible the DVDs were. Even at the time, the DVDs looked terrible. And I don't think Stingray is ever going to look as sort of eye-poppingly, uh, you know, colourful as uh, as Scarlet and Joe because I, I just don't think they were they were quite there with the colour filming yet. But this is a huge step up. It really does look beautiful. And here we go. A terrorfish, Aquafibians closing on the submarine. 
Now this episode, I, I believe I mentioned recently buying uh, an ex-rental Joe 90 VHS from the library, and I think I mentioned I had a, a Stingray tape. I bought what looked like the case for Volume 9, and inside was Volume 6. This was one of the episodes on that tape, so I, uh, I watched this quite a bit when I was younger. I won't be... I know people love hearing about my um, random VHS memories. Ah, he's just keeping up the big man act, Bones. I'm going to try to cut him down to size. Well, it's not a shrinking episode, is it? What can we do? Well, I figure that missile has got just one thing wrong with it. It's French. Right. Jordan will go away like a wounded catfish. And if you're wrong, Troy? Oh, then we get another dent in Stingray's hull. Yeah. Okay, Jordan, let's get this show over. Fire missile. Fire is the word, Tempest. I love the reveal of how, how they do the reveal here. On target. Jordan's been making all these cryptic comments, cryptic clues. Fire that missile. Okay, Tempest, but listen. Which Troy is too dense to pick up on, but in fact, the Aquafibians are aboard. Damn nice. But this is called blooded murder. They've taken control of the sub. I guess there's only Jordan on the sub. Not obey. You'll die. Oh. Then... We do it. This way, you will live and end in shame. Now, hmm. fire on the sun. I love the Aquafibians trying to talk English. I just love the Aquafibians all the way around. The design is just beautiful. Their intelligence and stupidity is just insane. Um, okay, phones. I love that they look scary, but they're not scary, really. And yet, here, you know... Jordan is clearly uh, cowed by them. He's uh, you know, two against one, and they're both armed. Red one eight zero. I'm also noticing recently, and again, it might be might be the, the effect of HD. Their um, their bottoms and their uh, their f accompanying front parts. They just have these fronds to cover the uh, cover the joints on the puppet. It's quite funny because uh, yeah, wouldn't they be the uh, would they be... Oh, no, I suppose Mitch and Zuni. I was going to say they're the only characters in the Anderson shows who walk around stark naked all the time. Before the end, you murderers. So, yes, another missile has been launched. You'll never shake it. Unbeknownst to Troy and Phones, it's got a live missile. Again, we're seeing one or two more of those shots. 60 seconds. The Stingray goes through frame, cut, then the missile goes through frame, cut. And there's just a slight discrepancy between the two. Seconds. Tempest will be finished. Oh, if only there was something wrong with the torpedo. But it's infallible. Oh, no. Well, these Aquafibians are doing quite well so far. They uh, took over the sub very easily. Impact 30 seconds. Okay, this is it. Almost going to blow up Troy and Phones. Troy, have you gone crazy? Yes. Right, Phones. Oh, more lovely back projection stuff. He's going to leave it just to the last minute to pull up to avoid hitting some rocks. Stingray makes it. But the missile didn't. Phones! That missile! It was armed with a warhead. But, but how? There's only one answer. Oink. Jordan, those missiles can't be charged accidentally. You mean it was deliberate, Troy? What else? Oh. Navy Sub 27 from Stingray. Have you gone crazy, Jordan? Oh, dear. Leave. The Aquafibians are not happy about this. Oh, do something to the missile. No, <laughs> no, I swear it. Tempest up. And I love this line coming up. Titan very angry. Titan very angry. I just, I love, I love trying to, I don't know, just work out what the the average life, a day in the life of an aquafibian would be like. Power from Stingray. Come on. Poor things. Troy, what's going on out there? We watched the whole thing on the aquascan. That missile had a warhead, sir. Then it was a deliberate attempt to kill you and Phones. Ooh. What does Jordan think he's doing? Well, he's not answering. What worries? I'm enjoying this. I'm sorry, I'm enjoying this. I'm realising this is my first time watching this episode in HD. It's always been a... Um, it's not one of my absolute favourites, but it's... You know what, Lander? It's up there. There's no other course, Troy. You'll have to attack first. It just looks so nice all the way along. Some crazy scheme of Captain Jordan's just to prove that the Navy's better than the Wasps. I don't know, Atlanta, and I don't care. As it stands, Jordan has committed an act of war. Oh... 
Oh, I love how serious it, it gets here. We've gone from a another missile, a nice little domestic dinner party to act of war. Ray, you are classified as a hostile vessel. <laughs> and the Agrophobians just oh 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 no! I won't have time to. I love the way that how quickly their heads move and their eyes move as well, wiggling back and forth in terror. What's your answer, Jordan? We're going to fire to kill. And again, Don Mason really strong here. The great performance in this show. There's nothing we can do. Yay, Aquafibian speaking. Hibi, hibi, hibi. You have 30 seconds, Jordan. Do you surrender? Just tell me what to do, Troy. It may be a trick. Yeah, but I've got to accept his word. Close in and be ready with the missiles. Really sense how much Troy wants to blow this French twit to pieces. But the Aquafibians have abandoned ship, returned to their own terror fish. Believe me, Tempe. I know this is a very silly thing to say. I think this is probably my favourite Aquafibian team in the series, and uh, you know they're all interchangeable. They're all just cannon fodder. But I, I rather like that these this pair have been entrusted to go out on their own, unsupervised, to carry out this mission. Now surface immediately and proceed. Great. Oh, and suddenly, finally, Stingray notices that there was a terror fish in the area the whole time. Jordan surfacing. Okay, let's go after him. Troy! There's another craft submerged where the sub was. What kind of craft? Oh, that's why they didn't get it, because it was right next to the sub. Troy, look! Oh, stock footage. Lots of stock footage here of, of Stingray and the terror fish. Prepare to attack, phones. I've got to kill something, phones. I didn't get to kill that useless Torb Jordan. All speed, Jordan, and report to Commander Shore. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a confrontation I'd like to see. Yes. Oh dear. Oh. Oh. Are we not going to get Stingray destroying the terror fish? Uh, I tell you, I had. Okay. Um. I mean, we've seen that shot in countless episodes, but that does seem a bit of a cheat there that we don't get the. Uh, the explosion. But we have found nothing. But it's true, I tell you. Maybe that means those aquafibians escaped to fight another day. Force me to arm the missile. Sorry, Captain. It won't do. You'll be held in close arrest pending your court martial. I'm wearing my hat now. This is a serious situation, you see. Do that, sir. Are right, you back, Troy? Eh? What do you mean? Guess Jordan's story is true, sir. We located one of Titan's ships manned by two aquafibians. <gasps> We destroyed the craft. <laughs> oh, those aquafibians got blowed up. Oh, I like them. You're off the hook. It's strange, though, that this show would would have a, a battle off screen like that. Man, and the wasps had given in to the enemy as easily as you did, I'd have thrown him out of the service. Oh. That is all. And you can tell he really meant that. He lifted his finger over his head for some reason, wa waggled it. Oh, it's well of you guys to invite me to the party after what happened. You can thank Atlanta for that. I'm surprised Marina could be bothered to throw another one after how badly the first one went. Swell evening. Guess you're the type that never learns, Jordan. Oh, forget it, Troy. Life's too short. Well... And Troy, I think, really is looking for a fight here. Yeah, Commander Sure. You're all the same. Still can't accept that the Navy's number one. I don't think you should say any more about that, Jacques. Why not, Atlanta? It's true. He was about to cut martial me. But then I started crying, and somehow I have not been caught martialed. I'm sorry, Marina. I love how um, yeah, Jordan has been proven a complete coward, but he's still carrying on with, I am the greatest. You're nothing but a stupid bragging phony. If I'd been the... <gasps> oh, you tell him. Clapped you in irons and gone ahead with a charge of cowardice in the face of the enemy. Now listen here. Whoa. No, you listen to me, Jordan. Both puppets are on their feet. Lots of arm waving. Voice. And I figure I speak for maybe 99% of the Marineville personnel. I'm not going to stay here and be insulted. I'm living. Well, that suits me fine. I'll show you to the door. Don't bother. Good. Bye. Oh, zut alors. Never have I seen so much angry Frenchness. Oh, well, that's it then. He's gone. Another dinner party ruined. Oh, Atlanta's crying. Sorry, Atlanta, but I had to do that. <laughs> I love the tone of voice there. Yes, I had to be a complete prig about everything, but I figure it was for the best. I would have. 
I've been a fool, Troy, not to have seen through him. I do love this. And forgive me for last... Nice emotional ending. Let's say we forget it. The whole thing. No dramatic build-up or anything. Jordan just never came to Marineville. All right. It's and Lois Maxwell doing the crying noises. Guy Jordan, anyway. Never heard of him. Shall we go back inside? I hear Marina's throwing a swell party. Yeah. Very nice, very warm, very genuine, tender way to end the episode. That makes four of the best people, Atlanta. Guess you didn't count yourself. Or we were counting Oink somehow by accident. Oh. So... It's all patched up. They're the best of friends as ever they were. I really love that ending, oddly enough. It's so subdued. It's so just genuinely warm and emotional. Much like I love most of that episode, The Man from the Navy. As I said, this is one I, I watched a lot in my younger days, and it was always nice to... You know, you read the back of the box and you think, oh, okay, I'm a guy from the Navy, of course. Blah, blah, blah. That enough, that that on its own could have been enough of a story. But the fact that we have this this Titan subplot the, with the lovely Aquafibians, it's uh, just a, a nice touch to a, an already nice. You know, it's not a spectacular episode, but it's um, it, it's definitely. Yeah. There's a phrase I've used so often: a solid B grade episode. I'm I'm trying to find another way to say that phrase, but you know. It'll do. I'm certain to I, I, I really like this one. I don't think um, I don't think I've seen many people talk about this one. Um, probably because it is quite low stakes and um, you know not a not an awful lot happens. But there's a nice mix of action and, and character stuff in particular, which was something this show did really well. So you know, not the most spectacular Stingray episode, but it's it's you know. It's a runner-up. It's a pretty, uh, pretty darn good one. So if you haven't seen this one, I would thoroughly recommend checking it out on Blu-ray, of course. It's out now on Blu-ray. Did I mention it's on Blu-ray? Hey! Now oh. there's something fishy about this. Yes, Stingray. Yes, yes. Because yeah, uh, do you think he's been manipulating that randomizer well. because he wanted to practice his dance again? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him. It's the sort of thing he'd mm. do, isn't it? Mm. It's very, very Chris Dale kind of maneuver that. So yes. Uh, yes. Anyway. Nice yes. for the Stingray Stingray and Lerner Nerner, so that's always, always welcome. nice. Always welcome, yeah, that's right. People have been enjoying yeah. their uh, box sets I've seen on the uh, Facebook group as well, posting pictures on uh, Facebook or Twitter of their new arrivals. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, inclu including uh, Stingray Terror Fake. Oh, yes. Which is the audio uh, mini album written uh -huh. by uh, Nicholas Briggs, of course. That's right. Yes. Which I think is a rather lovely little tribute. And as many of you who have listened may have noticed, director Taylor on that. Um, hastily renamed uh, in memory of the late John Taylor, um, ah. who we, we heard had passed away just a couple of days before recording. And Nick yeah. did a very quick pass through and um, uh, and renamed the original uh, right. guy, who I think was maybe Hagen or something like that. Uh -huh. uh, okay, maybe not. I can't, I can't remember what the original name was, but anyway, changed changed uh, in honour of John. So that's rather lovely. Nice. Names are very tricky things. I, I'm doing a bit of writing at the moment, and uh, it's very but difficult thinking. Well, it's yeah, and it's not kind of regular. It's it's sort of sci-fi related. Is so it? thinking of sci-fi names mm. is very very tricky. Mm. Do you find yourself putting lots of Z's and X's in them? <laughs> exactly. It's weird, isn't it? Why? <laughs> That's very odd. Well, they seem double, alien double to us X's in as well. English. Yeah. yeah oh double X's. yes. Uh, yeah. Mm, Strange, mm. isn't it? But anyway, uh, now over on Twitter. Uh, we do yes. know, don't we, that uh, Chris Packer is a great friend of the Jerry Anderson podcast and also oh, yes. a big fan of Jerry Anderson in general. Uh, and he tweeted this week in support of the Guide Dogs UK charity. He said, when you're a child, an exciting rite, rite of passage is to dream about what you'll be when you grow up. I wanted to be a Thunderbirds pilot. Uh, he said, it's great that Guide Dogs UK is supporting and empowering children with a vision impairment to make their dreams a reality. So, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed our interview with Chris Packham many, many moons ago now, Jamie's interview, Ooh, yes. I should say, nothing to do with me, uh, maybe well, uh, take a look at the Guide Dogs UK uh, <laughs> uh, charity website and uh, if you can, uh, maybe drop them a pound or two. Uh, Jonathan Spencer tweeted, I've just had an idea for a movie reboot of an Anderson show, a gritty reboot of Four Feather Falls. Well, this ties into the message we had earlier. Uh, Clint does, Eastwood has played Tex Tucker. So much? I don't know. Yeah, but Clint Eastwood has text Tex Tucker, and the, and the music provided by Ennio Morricone. Genius Obviously. or what? But that's just a Clint Eastwood and Ennio Morricone <laughs> film, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, mm. exactly. So I can see the flaw there. Uh, mm. Pete Kirby says, huge congratulations to Jamie and Ben for their excellent documentary, Jerry Anderson, A Life Uncharted, and Q&A session in Bristol on Tuesday night, oh. engrossing and moving. Glad I brought tissues with me. Oh, oh I know. It's nice, isn't it? And then finally, Jeff Owen says, two things I've noticed in Captain Scarlet. One, all of the angels in Captain Scarlet are named after musical terms. Rhapsody, symphony, harmony, melody. Noted. Destiny. Um, for, hmm. for, yeah, yeah, not that one so much. Yeah. There's always um, one outlier. Okay. And secondly, in a certain light, the Mr. On rings look like googly eyes. Well, I mean, I think that's sort of the intention, isn't it? I mean, they're not direct representations of eyes, but I think they are meant to suggest some sort of alien force observing, looking, searching, hunting. Don't you think? I think I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you'd maybe just have one. You'd just have a spotlight, wouldn't you, rather than two. Yeah, the two's an interesting thing, isn't it? it? I'm sure there's an explanation as to why they went for that, but yeah, um, yeah. it's a uh, very effective thing. Yes. Uh, in the meantime, you can hashtag us, Jerry Anderson Podcast, or tag me, Richard N. James, or him over there, I'm Jamie Anderson, or him over there, uh, just packing away his uh, sweatpants and his... Uh, um, his uh, dancing, he always got a rah-rah skirt. He didn't wear that, did he? Anyway, he's putting it no. all away for now. That's Chris Dalek, uh, and uh, I'll read out your tweets next time. And I cannot wait to see Chris's full aquamarina routine in due yeah. course. Yeah. Perhaps uh, right. he can do it the next live podcast. I mean, maybe. Yes, that's a very good idea. Yeah. Uh, pod 1000 in October 2032. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's a deal for you. He's okay, got a long time right. to perfect it. <laughs> uh, right, anyway, look, I feel like we've kind of come to the natural conclusion of this Jerry Anson podcast. Is that fair what, to you say? Really just, you really just feel like that? Just I this mean, episode, I mean, not the <laughs> whole thing. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, I thought I thought we were going to leave it there. Fine, okay. Afraid not, we've got no. a long way to go yet. <gasps> yeah, sure. As Terry from yeah. Hereford pointed out. Yeah. He's right. But for now, this is the end of Pod 205. We'll be I, back with Pod see. 206 next week yep. because that's how we roll. So yeah, we'll be yeah. back on, uh, what's that going to be, Monday the 23rd, is it? Or the, Will it? Like that, 24th? Yeah. 23rd, wow. yeah. Okay, of, of great. May. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, if you're listening to this in the far-flung future, then um, you can just listen yes. to the next episode right <gasps> now. Or if you're listening to it in the far-flung past, where did you get your time machine? Yes. How are you doing this? And if you did... Well, why did you bother going back in time just to listen to an episode of the Jerry Anderson podcast? Surely you'd kill future. Hitler or go to see Hamlet being performed at Shakespeare's Globe. You wouldn't yeah, go back and listen to the Jerry Anderson obviously. podcast. Obviously. Who knows? Anyway, we'll Who find knows? out in the past or the future or the present, but certainly yeah. next week in Pod 206. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. Bye. Let's go. Spectrum is green. I'm not sure that time thing works, you know, because they'd have to download it now in the present, then go back in time with their device and listen to it in the past. Or they've got some sort of audio wormhole tunneling device, which brings in audio data from the future back to the past. But they still had to have taken that from the future to the past. So is that is your idea going to work? Jamie, I didn't really think it through. Uh, Well, I noticed that. I'm sorry. It was just an I'm idea that came to the top of my head and I hadn't sat, sat down with a pen and paper and worked out all the implications. <laughs> well, can I just make a request that in future, if you're going to postulate time travel things, you consider yes. these things before you actually open your mouth. <sighs> right. In fact, Perhaps I knew you were going to say that and because I've that, yeah. been <laughs> back in time to hear you say that and now I've come back to have this right. conversation. Yeah, Brilliant. I knew you were going to say uh, that as well. And I know what you're going to say next. Go on then. Perfect sense you were going to say. Yes, See? you're right. And what about now? Now I'm going to suggest that you probably go somewhere and do something, aren't I? Yeah, exactly. I knew you were going to say that. Mm. Yeah, and well, that. off you pop then and do it. And that. And that. Don't hurt, don't hurt yourself. And that. Bye. And that.
You have been listening to the Jerry Anderson Podcast. Wasn't it fun? You have been listening to an Anderson Entertainment production.